G'day, if you've been following our nutrition series, we are on to the last of our essential nutrients. We are on to effectively what um, some call the nano nutrients, um, so moly and nickel, as well as boron and chlor, which are some other micronutrients. Before we get into it, my name's Till Simmons. I run this channel, Agriculture Explained. I make this for free so you can learn more about agriculture, about plant nutrition. Uh, I love plant nutrition. Um, this my aim is to help you either with your studies or farming or just even your veggie garden or whatever you want to do with agriculture. This whole channel is for free, so the only ask I have of you is to subscribe so that I can help you in future videos um, understand more about agriculture. And the other ask I have of you is to share with someone that you know that would appreciate this. Maybe they have a farm um, and have some problems that we're talking about now and, and might be able to fix it. So you never know how much um, money will make them basically by showing you them this. Awesome, so let's get into it. So the first one we have is molybdenum or moly for short. It is used in a very, very small amount. So 0.00001% of the dry matter. Um, this is the smallest nutrient um, or the, the smallest amount of nutrient used um, out of all our essential nutrients but it has a very, very important role in uh, nitrogen uh, use. So it's absorbed as um, lignanote, which is basically uh, the moly with some oxygen attached to it. Um, and its main function, so there's two main functions. The first one is nitrogen fixation in our legumes. So it's an important uh, cofactor in a lot of the enzymes used in that. So if a legume does not have uh, malignum, it won't be able to fix any nitrogen. Um, so it's very important that our legume crops have a uh, sufficient amount of uh, moly, otherwise they're gonna be useless. The other one is nitrate conversion. So if you see over, over here, we have uh, nitrate to nitrite and then to ammonium. So this is the form that plants can use. They can't really use nitrate, they need to convert it into ammonium. And so they can only do this with the uh, nitrate reductus, reductase enzyme, which converts it to nitrite. And that enzyme uses molybdenum. It must use it. If it doesn't have any molybdenum, it cannot convert the nitrate to nitrite, which means you can give all the nitrate fertilizer in the world and you're gonna have a nitrate, uh, nitrogen deficient crop. So it's very important that if we are applying nitrates, we're applying moly or at least we're checking to make sure our plants have a sufficient amount of moly in it as well. Next we have boron. Boron is actually used in, I guess, a decent amount for a micro, 0.002%. It's absorbed as boric acid. Now there's not that much research done on boron. It's probably the least understood of our plant nutrients. Um, no one even knows, I think, how it's it's um, absorbed by the plant. Like it's not really, not many people know about it. The function of boron still remains a little bit of a mystery, but we know some things. We also know that if they don't have it, the the plant dies. Now boron isn't well understood. Um, even the way it's absorbed by the plant, as well as um, its function, they're not very well understood in the mechanisms of why it's, you know, what it does and why and how. So this is kind of where um, our understanding of at least boron starts to um, uh, get limited. But the main uh, function that we understand it to have is a very key um, function in transport of uh, molecules and sugars and ions across cell walls and membranes. And so the easiest way to think about it is that we have our cell wall or membrane here. Basically boron acts as a trap door to allow for things to go through. And so uh, when we have sufficient amount of boron, we have a sufficient amount of trap doors that allow, you know, um, they can open and allow things to go through. So calcium, for example, so boron and calcium are very, uh, uh, linked to each other. If we have low amounts of boron, we won't get a very high uptake of calcium. Boron's also very important for making sure our sugars are transported around the cell and the rest of the plant. And that's really important because when you think about the production of sugars, it's all happening in the leaves, but you want those sugars to then be transported elsewhere to the plant. You don't want them to build up in the, in the um, leaf, otherwise you can get um, insect and um, pest pressures. You want that sugar to then be um, transported to you know the roots and the stem and, and other places that need it. Boron will also help with um, transporting you know all our, our proteins and um, 
nitrates and, and all that are in. Next we have chlorine, although it's a essential nutrient, it's never really in um, a deficient state. It might be in excess, which is um, never good, and we'll talk about that in future videos, but typically a lot of our fertilizers have a lot of chlorine in it, um, just because of the way, um, the, or the type of fertilizers we use. Typically the salts with a lot of chlorine in it. So we're never really gonna have to apply chlorine just for the sake of applying chlorine. Um, it's it's used in a pretty high amount in the plant, 0.01%, and it's absorbed as chloride um, by our plants. The main function of chloride or chlorine is in the water status of our plants, so making sure the uh, cell walls are um, turgid, so they're full of water. So you can see here in this little diagram, it, a, a plant can regulate how um, full it is full of water by the amount of chloride or other osmolites, which are these type of um, nutrients in, in the cell. So if they pump a lot more chloride into the cell, a lot more water is going to want to push in to then dilute it. So it becomes equal with the outside, outside uh, area. And so effectively what will happen, all this water will push in and like a balloon, when you, when you fill it up, it um, stretches out. So this has an important role in uh, guard cells on the stomata that open and close, um, as well as a whole bunch of things um, that require um, osmotic pressures and you know water movement and, and all that. Typically, again, not very um, important for us to manage because typically our soils have enough uh, chlorine in it, um, but important to know in case that's gonna cause a problem elsewhere. Finally, we have nickel. Nickel, like moly, isn't used much, much at all. 0.0001% of our dry um, weight, not, not much at all. You can almost think of nickel as the opposite um, or the urea version of moly. Um, it's used in the conversion of urea to uh, ammonium. Firstly, it's, it's absorbed in the cation or the um, reduced state. Firstly, it's absorbed as nickel two plus and then it's, uh, it's used in urea conversion. So when we think of urea conversion, we need to think of, so this is, I guess, this is urea here. We have basically two, two potential uh, ammonium molecules attached to that, and then a carbon and oxygen. So what, what this enzyme does, which is um, uh, uranase, that contains our nickel. So it's very important that this enzyme has nickel, otherwise it's not gonna work. So it's a cofactor the nickel must be present with the enzyme for it to work, otherwise it doesn't work and, and this process does not happen. So we have our um, urea, we have water, so water is used in this process. Uranase is used and then that produces carbon dioxide to produce two ammonium uh, molecules which can then be used uh, by the plant. So what this means for our production system is that if we're using a lot of urea as our source of nitrogen, we gotta make sure we have nickel um, supplied to our plant as well. So typically it's not too much of a problem and there's a lot of nickel in our soils as there is, but it might not be available to our plant. And so you can actually get testing done um, on our plants, make sure that they have sufficient amounts of nickel. And if you find out that your plant doesn't have um, sufficient amount of nickel, you can then apply that as a foliar spray. The other really important part of this urea um, conversion is in uh, trees that go dormant over winter, so like apple trees, uh, cherries, um, all of that. Urea is stored in the bark as the plant's reserve of nitrogen. And then when the bud breaks, basically that urea needs to then be converted into ammonium. And that process requires nickel for it. And so if our trees are deficient in nickel, we might have a problem with uh, bud break and basically we're not we're not gonna get a really good um, release of leaves because there's not enough nitrogen for the plant to then produce new leaves. And so there's a few um, studies I found that they have a basically the same tree, but they sprayed one side of the tree with nickel, the other side didn't, and you can see like the, the uh, outcome of that. Like this side of the tree is nice and green, heaps of leaves, like they look really good, and this side of the tree is really struggling. There's basically no leaves. It's it's not looking good. And that's simply just because they sprayed a foliar application of nickel. 
So that's it for our essential plant nutrients. If you haven't seen the other videos, I think there's four or so out um, with all our other plant essential plant nutrients. We will have another video coming out about non-essential plant nutrients. And even though it says non-essential, they're still important for our production system and we can increase our yields um, by applying them. Again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and tell a friend. Otherwise, cheers.